Item Number SCP-5994 Object Class Safe Threat Level Undetermined Special Containment Procedures SCP-5994, along with the building in which it resides, has been purchased from Group of Interest 952, Olney Ironworks. Footnote 1 Update February 20th, 2018 Following the transfer of Olney to Preferred Option Holdings, a Foundation front company, legal ownership of SCP-5994 is managed appropriately. No further containment measures are deemed necessary. On the order of Director Drummond, the original legacy systems are to be reinstated and remain in place indefinitely. Description: SCP-5994 is the surveillance room of the former Olney Ironworks Southeast Houston Manufacturing Center. Prior to Incident G-952-AE Tenenbacher, SCP-5994 displayed no anomalous properties. Surveillance equipment inside SCP-5994 plays a continuous 3-hour and 36-minute loop of the events of Incident G-952-AE Tenenbacher, an anomalous event that took place on October 25, 1997 between the hours of 10.24 p.m. and midnight, resulting in the decommissioning of the mill. This includes all systems installed following the incident, allowing for perspectives impossible through the original hardware. While playbacks of SCP-5994 remain largely consistent, divergences have been recorded and can be forced through the installation of conspicuous secondary components within existing equipment. Despite this, the full scope of Incident G-952-AE Tenenbacher has yet to be prevented on record. Subjects depicted in SCP-5994's playbacks correspond to employees present at the time of the event. The Foundation has been unable to locate these subjects for questioning. See Interview Transcripts History SCP-5994 was discovered on October 26, 1997, when Group of Interest 952 contacted SC Public. Footnote 2 A Foundation front organization meant to facilitate above-veil interactions with GOI-952. For assistance in containing SCP-5994-1, Six minutes prior to the arrival of Mobile Task Force Omega-19, double feature, however, SC Public was informed by Olney Administration that the incident had been dealt with and that further help was unnecessary. Post-incident analysis was impeded by Group of Interest 952, as expected. Interrogation of Incident G-952-AE Tenenbacher's confirmed survivors. Footnote 3 Former security officer Sai Min An and boilermaker Stefan Sakata proved fruitless, with both citing company policy as proof that the incident was an extensive hallucination. Furthermore, the entirety of the factory floor had been sprayed with the black fly compound, hindering the collection of forensic evidence. Foundation personnel discovered SCP-5994 during a routine audit of surveillance footage. Following its discovery, Site-56 Command negotiated the sale of the Southeast Houston Manufacturing Center to Foundation Holdings. Containment was established on November 6, 1997. Playback Log Control The following is a rough summary of Incident G-952-AE Tenenbacher, based on the hardware configuration originally present within the Manufacturing Center. Researchers with OII-5994 or greater clearance may access the associated video logs. The recordings begin at 202436, with little deviation from the events typical of the factory's operation, with two exceptions. A man, identified as Joan Lopez, a worker reported as missing following the incident, manning a casting station, drops what looks to be a necklace or circular chain into a mold full of molten metal. The man reacts with either frustration or apprehension, before leaving to confront his manager, identified as Joan Sanchez, also missing. Footnote 4 the content of Mr. Lopez and Mr. Sanchez's conversation is unknown. The two refuse to conduct their conversation in range of visible audio capture devices, and will not conduct their conversation at all should a hidden audio capture device be installed anywhere in the facility. Another man, identified as Raymond Navarro, also missing, inside of a break room immediately answers his phone. The call appears to last around six minutes, during which time Navarro nods, pacing around the break room. Audio capture suggests the call pertains to a transport of baking soda to the Northwest Portland Manufacturing Center. The first anomalous event occurs when a trap door in the vehicle bay 
Footnote 5. There does not currently appear to be a trap door in the corresponding present-day area. Excavation is pending director approval. Is jostled by an unseen figure at 2027-18. For the next 10 minutes, several employees react to a faint rustling from various machinery and ventilation shafts. At 2038-27, Mr. Lopez suddenly stops to look at an industrial furnace, from which emerges an unharmed domestic pig. Mr. Lopez appears confused before returning to speak to his manager. In the time taken to reach Mr. Sanchez, two more pigs emerge from the same furnace. More pigs emerge from various ventilation shafts, trap doors, and damaged machine parts throughout the manufacturing center. By 2047-27, around 46 pigs have emerged. At 2050-21, Mr. Sanchez calls all employees present within the manufacturing center to an impromptu meeting in order to discuss the incident. An argument between Mr. Sanchez and a security officer, identified as Sai Min An, a survivor of Incident G952AE Tenenbacher, occurs, leading to the officer's subsequent firing and removal from the premises. At 2102.59, several pigs on the factory floor are visibly startled, fleeing from the furnaces. Mr. Sanchez phones his superior at 2110.46, reporting another goddamn pig bloom. This call lasts 10 minutes and consists primarily of Mr. Sanchez nodding and affirming his superior's requests. At 2128.19, all outdoor surveillance feed cuts out. Additionally, overhead lighting throughout the factory is cut off for approximately 19 seconds before turning back on. A large, superficially porcine figure designated SCP-5994-1 can be seen mid-emergence from a blast furnace. Mr. Sanchez's meeting is dismissed at 2158.04, after which employees are redirected back to their stations. SCP-5994-1 is encountered a minute later. The contents of remaining footage are difficult to parse. It is observed, however, that employees have entered a state of intense panic. Several attempt to flee the premises, despite the activation of only installed locking mechanisms. Remaining employees attempt to shut down active machinery, a task hindered by SCP-5994-1 and a panicking herd of swine. At 2357.00, a white flash, originating from the central blast furnace, overtakes all surveillance equipment on the premises. Footage remains obscured for three minutes, before looping back to the beginning. Addendum 5994-012 Experimentation and Interview For the purposes of this document, SCP-5994 as depicted by SCP-5994 has been designated SCP-5994. On August 4, 2003, Dr. James Carvalho, Footnote 6, then director of USNVBR Site 56, which holds jurisdiction over the GOI 952 project, submitted a grant request for experimentation in the hopes of facilitating communication with subjects depicted by SCP-5994. Dr. Carvalho cited Mr. Lopez and Mr. Sanchez's reactions to the installation of audio capture equipment as evidence of potential two-way communication. His request was approved following an extensive budgeting audit, on the condition the SCP-5994 containment team investigate the events of Incident G952-AE Tenenbacher. In hopes of facilitating interviews, SCP-5994 was fitted with a rudimentary form of two-way audio through the installation of a camera-fitted intercom, as well as the installation of a conspicuous audio capture device. Initial attempts to coax subjects into SCP-5994 via direct appeal were unsuccessful, with a majority of subjects electing to report the offending equipment to Mr. Sanchez for subsequent dismantlement. Furthermore, the promise of assistance against SCP-5994-1 was ignored even after its discovery. Having failed to convince the subjects directly, the SCP-5994 research team experimented with a variety of alternate methods. Interviews conducted with Olney's human resources departments revealed that Mr. Navarro had been reprimanded in November of 1996 following a series of attempts to personally investigate an unrelated anomaly. In light of this, the SCP-5994 research team installed several devices intended to mimic minor anomalous phenomena, positioning them in a rough path between Mr. Navarro 
Navarro starting position and SCP-5994. On October 8, 2003, researchers successfully coaxed the virtual Mr. Navarro, designated SCP-5994-A, into SCP-5994. Interview 5994-A Date October 8, 2003 Subject SCP-5994-A Begin Log SCP-5994-A enters SCP-5994, gently locking the door behind it. With a sigh, it takes stock of the equipment. Tío, ese tío se está yendo al enfermo. Hello, Mr. Navarro. SCP-5994-A swears, falling back into a desk and wincing in pain. Apologies. I'm with SC Public. On behalf of your employer, I'll be conducting an open-ended survey into the Southeast Houston Manufacturing Center's operation. Do you all got a call from the intercom? Yes. SCP-5994-A climbs back up to a standing position, nursing an apparent hip injury. Alright. Good answer I'll ever get. Right. Let's begin. So, in the past week, have you noticed anything strange in regards to the operations of the Manufacturing Center? You're gonna have to define... strange. That's alright. Have you witnessed, heard, or been made to engage in anything you would consider either statistically improbable or physically impossible, based on your understanding of the laws of physics, chemistry, and sociology? SCP-5994-A glances around SCP-5994 before turning back to face the intercom. If you mean just in the past week, no. It's business as usual. But, look, some things you'll never understand, right? I... there's words for it. They're not coming to tongue. That's alright. Just try your best. No, no, it's not... it's something you'll see for yourself. The machines... stretch? It's constant, and you'll get used to it, but I, I think my brain might be fried. Sorry. Don't worry, that's sufficient. Now, for the next part of the survey, I'll need you to stare at the bottom monitor, second from the right, for around five minutes should suffice. Mm -hmm. Got it? Sighing, SCP-5994-A folds its arms before turning to face the specified monitor. SCP-5994-A remains silent until 203837, whereupon it sighs in apparent frustration. Is that it? You still have about two more... No, the thing. The pig. I assume this isn't a normal occurrence. I don't get interviewed over the intercom. It ain't a normal occurrence. The pigs out to kill me flying for all I care. And how'd you know? Don't worry about that. For the record, was there- I'm sorry. I'm stuck on the fact that a pig came out to kill. And this time, y'all knew. Heaven's sake, what are y'all pulling here? I just want a cast steal, and y'all are out here putting pigs in the works. Jesus, man. We'd prefer if you focused on the interview. Seriously? I- Fine. Fine. Thank you. Two more minutes pass. Now, to your knowledge, has anything happened in the past three months that may explain what you've just witnessed? No, I'm still not- SCP-5994-A cuts itself off, leaning closer to the monitor. Son of a bitch. Mr. Navarro? What are you trying to pull here? First it's the garage, now it's the kilns. If management knows that they sh- this stuff's going on again. It's our heads on the line, do you understand? One pig's bad enough. And y'all are out here trying to top pigs with pigs! Then this has happened before? SCP-5994-A remains silent for several seconds. Mr. Navarro? Yeah. That's enough for today. Despite protests from researcher Hartley, SCP-5994-A exits SCP-5994. End log. Closing notes. Following the failure of three subsequent attempts to interview SCP-5994-A, experimentation was suspended. Addendum 5994-013. Interview. On April 29, 2005, the annual full capacity activation of the Foundation's Panopticon surveillance network was conducted. During this time, Panopticon's attendant artificial intelligence construct. Footnote 7. ASE.AIC. 
flagged footage of a man entering a hardware store in Arlington, Texas. A review by the office of 0510 determined the man to be Mr. Raymond Navarro, previously reported as missing following incident G952AE Tenenbacher. With assistance from the Texas government, Mr. Navarro was tracked to the village of Sola Cruz, Texas, 28 miles from Arlington, where he was employed as a welder to a non-anomalous business. Agent Taft made contact with Mr. Navarro under the cover of SC Public. Interview 5994-B Date May 14, 2005 Subject Mr. Raymond Navarro Begin Log It's a pleasure to speak with you, Mr. Navarro. Ain't no problem, Chief. Most people call it a chore. <laughs> as long as we stay on topic, you're fine. Now, according to our records, you were an employee at Orney Steel Mill, correct? Yeah, yeah. Both remain silent for nine seconds. Not too keen on them? No, I... well, no, I wasn't. Excuse me, I was just thinking. They called themselves, or I guess that division, only ironworks. It was a steel mill, chief. We made iron, sure, but we turned it into steel as quick as we could. It is somewhat odd, I suppose. I imagine the actual work wasn't much more organized. Yeah, not at all, chief. They had this thing, in addition to the work we were doing, where one of us had to take the odd job. Most of it wasn't hard, no, but it was mostly weird. Make sure nothing comes out of the bronze kilns, keep the doors closed for a few hours, things like that. Huh. Fresh out of trade school, it felt normal. My current job does that too, but usually there's a spill on the floor that needs a mopping. Not three hours taking inventory on a single toolbox. What purpose do you think it serves? Chief, that steel mill's got a mind of its own. If you're not looking, you're not seeing everything that could go wrong. Of course, good luck getting only to admit to it. Most of the guys who put in too many complaints to management got fired. Interesting. Well, SCP Public's interested in a particular incident that took place on the night of October 25th, 1997. According to our records, you were present for the incident in question? Incident? The incident that resulted in the mill's closure. I was there for that? Man, my memory's not what it used to be. That's quite alright. Agent Taft retrieves a printout of figure 1.1 from his satchel. Do you recognize this? Is that a pig? Again, do you recognize this? No. Is it supposed to be some kind of art piece? Very well. Let's try this. Think back to your last day at the job. What can you recall? Mr. Navarro remains silent for 18 seconds. Ah, uh, yeah. It's all coming blank, Chief. That had to be a, a decade ago, right? Don't worry about that. Now, this may sound odd, but do you remember seeing, say, a domestic pig on location? So it's a pig? Just focus on the question for now. If you're trying to fuck with me, Chief, you're doing a great job. I don't remember seeing pigs, hearing pigs, anything to do with a pig that wasn't already cooked. You want to look into Oni, fine by me. But Oni looks back. Both remain silent for 21 seconds. Thank you for your time, Mr. Navarro. That should be all for now. End log. Closing notes. Mr. Navarro is to be monitored for further abnormalities. SCP-5994-A is unwilling to talk of what it knows, and Mr. Navarro is willing to talk yet can't remember. If we've any hope of understanding Incident G-952-AE Tenenbacher, one of them needs to budge. Director Carvalho. Addendum 5994-014. Level 5 clearance required. Access granted. Interview 5994-C. Date, May 14, 2005. Subject, SCP-5994-A and Mr. Raymond Navarro. Begin log. SCP-5994-A enters SCP-5994, gently locking the door behind it. With a sigh, it takes stock of the equipment. Tío, ese es el tío se está yendo al enfermo. Mr. Navarro? SCP-5994-A swears, falling back into a desk and wincing in pain. Apologies. I'm with SC Public, and... SCP-5994-A yells in apparent frustration, turning to leave SCP-5994. Hey, Chief. Do I sound familiar? 
SCP-5994-A stops, turning to face the intercom. Is that me? Eight years later, you wanna talk this through? What the hell am I doing on in the intercom, son? Right now, you're coming through on headphones, but uh, I ain't sure. It's a Blackwell here trying to work this out. Uh, believe me, Chief. I didn't believe it until I heard it. Oh, fine. Yeah, better than graveyard work. I'm surprised. The two of you are taking this rather well. Son, this is not the worst Ironworks will throw at ya. Ain't even second place. Interesting. Let's save that for later. Now, for the next part of this exercise, I'll need you to stare at the bottom monitor, second from the right, for... around five minutes should suffice. Me or him? Both of you, if that's alright. Hmm, got it. Loud and clear, Chief. Sighing, SCP-5994-A folds its arms before turning to face the specified monitor. Mr. Navarro follows shortly after. Both remain silent until 203837, whereupon SCP-5994-A sighs in apparent frustration. That's what you meant, huh? Wait, y'all know what's going on? Somewhat? It's eight years later, Chief. Fuck me, gently. How's the wife doing? Yeah, you're gonna wanna file out those divorce papers as soon as possible. The longer that goes on, Mr. A gets. Researcher Hartley furrows his brow and nods, turning back to his laptop. Back on topic. Past Mr. Navarro. Future Mr. Navarro tells me you've seen this before. The big? Yeah, there's one in the... Was the garage, I think. Couldn't have been more than three months back. The garage. Oh man. A place that'll be cursed by a witch or something. You remember when they had a saturated with black fly? The administration had to cut with SE just to get the equipment. Man, I envy you. Were you shocked up on all of this? A Zolacrest chief. I don't miss the traffic. Again, let's stay on topic. Now... Researcher Hartley trails off. Son of a bitch. You alright, chief? Never mind, it's nothing. So, back to the questions. Now, past Mr. Navarro, think back when you saw the pig. Did you tell anyone about what you saw? Management, perhaps? I mean no offense, son, but have y'all seen what they do to guys at the report stuff? Fair point, I have not. What about your wife? Sophia, right? With all due respect, Chief, I don't know what my ex has got to do with this. Answer the question, please. Him or me? It doesn't matter. Just tell me if you told Sophia about the incident. Man, it's not like Sophie's gonna believe me. Can't imagine I would've. Interesting. And you, future Mr. Navarro? I think I told her once or twice about the happenings. Might not have. Interesting. One last question. Are the two of you aware that Mr. Raymond Navarro was never married? All remain silent for 38 seconds. Researcher Hartley begins typing. I expected this from the recording, sure. But you, Mr. Navarro, you've always been talkative. Though I suppose, given that you are not Mr. Navarro, you had ulterior motives in cooperating with SC Public. Not that it matters. I've alerted security, and there's a single way out of here. Do you have anything to say for yourselves? All remain silent for 17 seconds. Pathetic. Now, researcher Hartley attempts to put a hand on Mr. Navarro's shoulder, only to knock over the freestanding sculpture of crudely stitched pork that now occupies its former space. After five seconds of silence, researcher Hartley swears, turning back to the video feed. SCP-5994-A is gone. In its place is a similar sculpture to the one presently spilled across SCP-5994's floor. Researcher Hartley remains silent for several seconds before standing up to stretch. Man, this place is going to hell. Hello, Mr. Hartley. Researcher Hartley swears, falling back into a desk and wincing in pain. Apologies, I'm with... On behalf of your employer, I will be conducting an open-ended survey into the SCP-5994 project's operation. Researcher Hartley climbs back up to a standing position, nursing an apparent hip injury. Oh, Jesus fucking- Researcher Hartley cuts himself off mid-sentence. Let's begin. So, in the past week, have you noticed anything strange in regards to the SCP-5994 project? 
both remain silent for nine seconds. Researcher Hartley does not move. Mr. Hartley? Researcher Hartley screams. Mr. Hartley? Still screaming, Researcher Hartley turns from the intercom and absconds from SCP-5994. End log. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Tannis Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell. Link in the description.